congrats to the L.A. Rams, Super Bowl champs. They certainly were a big topic of conversation this past season because their last first-round pick came in 2016. Sort of breaks a lot of the traditional roster-building tactics. Historically, teams value, covet those draft picks. It makes sense because the draft has always been a great way to land superstar talent. The 49ers with Bill Walsh did this. The Cowboys with Jimmy Johnson did this. But draft picks come with a risk because it's hard to predict how a college kid is going to perform in the NFL. And the Rams decided to take that risk out of the equation. They opted for proven talents like Matthew Stafford, Von Miller, Odell Beckham Jr. And those additions paid off last night. Stafford throwing for three touchdowns. Miller had a pair of sacks. And for years, we've heard that the way to build a championship team is through the draft. But with the way L.A. season turned out, maybe there's a new blueprint to win a Super Bowl. And I know a lot of people have talked about who should have been the MVP. Well, Cooper Cup got it, but this is what you have to understand. I think with the votes being tabulated before the two-minute warning, Aaron Donald, to me, was the most valuable player last night. Because... If you're going to make this argument, hey, the Bengals knew Cooper Cup was going to get the ball. They double teamed him. Well, Aaron Donald is double teamed on every play, sometimes triple teamed on every play. And while he had a quiet first half when they needed him the most, I thought that those stops were a difference maker. And Cooper Cup was wonderful, but I thought that Aaron Donald was the most valuable player. Cooper Cup, You know, he did what you wanted him to do with Odell Beckham not being in there. Even the fourth down run that he had, uh, they went to him three consecutive times. He gets the touchdown against uh, Eli Apple. That's the game winner. But if you, I think if you voted when the game was over, now they have to do it. They have to do it prior to the two minute warning because when we get ready to hand out the Super Bowl trophy, we have to know who the MVP is because they're going to be up there on the podium. Yes, Eaton. What is that? You're hitting it here a bit, but what is that process of voting for the Super Bowl MVP? How, like, what are the mechanics of that? I know it's okay before the two minutes, you have to get the votes in, but is there more detail to that? I don't know how it, who votes and and how they tabulate the votes. I don't know that other than I was told that they do it. Uh, right before the two-minute drill. Right, because from your side of things, if you're handing out the trophy and you have to do all of that, you just need to know the name, right? Yeah. But not necessarily the process leading up yeah. to it. Yeah, but the two-minute warning, I shouldn't say two-minute drill, the two-minute two warning, you have to have the votes tabulated. And I think, and look, either they could have done co-MVPs. Now, they, you know, understand this. I didn't think Tom Brady deserved it when the Patriots beat Seattle. <gasps> it should have been Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler was the most valuable player. Because without him, they don't win that Super Bowl. Um, who uh, Brady, even when they beat the Falcons, you could have given that to James White, couldn't you? Didn't he have an unbelievable game there? Yeah, especially late. Yeah. So, I, you know, we, we hand out that trophy, and sometimes we don't even realize. Santonio Holmes won it, and people probably don't realize that. Ben, to me, should have won it because he led the two-minute drill they beat Arizona, threw the ball in the perfect place for Santonio uh, Holmes. Santonio San Holmes. Tansonio. San something Holmes. <laughs> What's up, Holmes? All right. Uh, we'll come up with a poll question there, Seton. You're on the spot. What do you have? Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's okay, so far I'm kicking around two. All right. Uh, is that the last game we'll see Aaron Donald play, yes or no? That was a kind of a crazy storyline that developed leading into the game. Yeah, and and Rodney Harrison is not an insider. He's a former player, but he said it in a casual manner. Like, yeah, there's a good chance that Aaron Donald will retire if they lose. He's only 30 years of age, but I, who knows what motivates or, you know, you, you he's going to be a Hall of Famer. I think he's been uh, in the league eight years. He's been first team all pro, which is crazy. I mean, that's where you that that's where you find true greatness when you're an all pro, not a pro bowler, all pro. It was a casual mention, almost a throwaway line, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. And I was gonna text Rodney, but you know, he was involved in the Super Bowl coverage just to say, Do you realize what you just said or how you said it? Not that he needed me to remind him, but it was so casual, and then everybody started to run with it. It's like, whoa, whoa, Aaron Donald could retire. Yes, he 
Like I haven't looked at the contract situations for the Rams, but I wonder how much, if you can retain most of those players next year, how much that would weigh into his decision. Well, you got Von Miller and you got Odell Beckham. Stafford is going to be in his contract year next year. He's only $23 million, I think. You actually have a bargain with Matthew Stafford. Cooper Cup's under contract. I Ramsey. Think, uh, Ramsey, I think, is under contract. But, I, you know, they, they could lose a couple of those players. They want to keep Beckham still waiting to find out if he tore his ACL. I'm going to guess he did. Uh, and then Von Miller, does he want to stay? I think Von Miller's 33. Yeah, Paul. Going into next season, the Rams are $14 million over the cap. They think it might expand and it could be kind of a wash, but uh, they will have to do a little cutting. You start to look at the end results of these playoff games, and I can't remember playoff games that came down to the final seconds. Every playoff game. Because if you look at the divisional round, uh, the uh, conference championship, and then the Super Bowl, the last seven games in the playoffs were decided by seven points, three points, three points, three points, three points, three points, three points. Stat of the Whoa. day, stat of the day, tap, tap, stat of the day, stat of the day. Here comes that what? stat of the day. Stop. All right, all right. So we got our poll question. Well, what other options do we have? Uh, well, you could actually throw in there, was this the best NFL playoffs ever, just based on what you just laid out there, because every game was pretty incredible. I think people would agree because of recency bias. Mm. But I, you know, it's not, if I start to do inventory here, I, I just can't remember games that were this great that came down to, and I'm talking about great games, not necessarily it comes down to, uh, you know, the final seconds. And then we go, boy, that, that was a great game. Sometimes great games aren't great games. They're just great finish to it. But, you know, you had highs and lows, great moments, uh, strange plays, great plays. That's what you want. You want you, you want entertainment from start to finish, and I think I thought the Rams were on the verge of blowing them out, and and it just kind of settled down a little bit for the Bengals, and you know you you had a couple of interceptions with Stafford, they had a a big touchdown pass to T Higgins, it, it felt like the Bengals were never out of it, but it was never they were in full control. I never got that feeling. And I thought the Rams were going to win, but I was hoping the Bengals would, just as I've said before, being from the city of Cincinnati. I thought, I thought the Rams were a better team, star power, and the, the stars did perform. You know, Aaron Donald showed why he's a Hall of Famer. Cooper Cup, the best receiver in the sport. Even Odell Beckham with what he did in his limited time in there. And even Stafford as well, because I think you got that feeling of, could Stafford throw this away? And he had three touchdown passes. Uh, that's what you want. You know, Jalen Ramsey got burned a couple times. But, you know, the, the one was with T. Higgins. That's controversial. Now, that's not reviewable, by the way. They review every touchdown. But you can't go back and say, hey, there was a face mask there. Because you could do that on any play. Hey, there's a hold there. If there's no flag, then, you know, the touchdown's going to stand. Yes, Eden. I got one more for you then. Okay. Uh, Joe Burrow and the Bengals will make it back to the Super Bowl, dot, 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 next year, in the next two to five years, six to ten years, or never. Oh. This is why Dan Marino was trending yesterday. Uh, Mean-spirited. Uh. Because Dan Marino got to the Super Bowl, I believe that was his second year in the league, and he threw for 48 touchdown passes that year. Hey, he'll get back. Well, he never got back. It's going to be difficult for the Bengals to get back. You got to improve that offensive line. They got money to spend. Are they going to do what? Not that they're the Kansas City Chiefs, but the Chiefs said, hey, if we're going to win another Super Bowl, we have to go out and improve this offensive line. And they did. The Bengals have to spend money, and they haven't always spent money. I hope they realize you do have something special here. I'm sure they do. But spend the money, get an offensive line. I like Joe Mixon. I thought Joe Mixon was, you know, in a sneaky way, was had, had a great game. And even the defense. You know, I'm not sold on all of the defensive backs, but the defensive line, I mean, they, they handled the Rams. You got a great kicker, and, you know, you got Burrow and Chase and Higgins. I mean, you got, you got some weapons there. 
it's just so tough to get back. And even really the devastation, when you lose a Super Bowl, you normally don't even win a playoff game the following year. Now, it, it's difficult. Ask Russell Wilson. Ask Ben Roethlisberger. Ask Aaron Rodgers. It's difficult. You can be a great quarterback. And people also forget that Tom Brady went nine years in between Super Bowls. <laughs> like, you, here's the greatest quarterback, and you're going, nine years. So it's not easy. And I did say this last week. You know, there's a chance the, uh, the uh, Bengals might not even be the favorites in their own division because it might be the Ravens. It could be the Browns. Browns have a better defense and a better running game. I mean, they have a lot of, you know, positives there. Now, is Burrow better than Baker? Yes, absolutely. Uh, wide receiver-wise, you're, you're better off with what the Bengals have here. And, you know, the Ravens will be the Ravens. You know, they'll be formidable as well. Just winning your division. And, you know, the Bengals, they weren't a great team this year. They were just opportunistic. When they needed to do something, they did it, and usually it was with a game-winning field goal. Uh, there were times when you watched them and you said, you know, they're not that good or they're just average. You know, you lose to the Jets or the Bears and you go, they're not that good. And then there were other times when you go on the road, and you beat Kansas City or you beat the Titans, you survive the Raiders. They got hot at the right time and nearly won a Super Bowl. 